So woodworking students, and talking about making accurate measurements, I want to talk a little bit about your marking tools here. Typically, to start with anyway, in this class, what we will be using to do to mark measurements and to make measurements are, uh, are just pencils. And it turns out uh, there, is, there is such a thing as called a carpenter's pencil. You may have seen these, uh, these kind of thick pencils with a very thick uh, tip and lead on them, um, this big chunky pencil. They're called carpenter's pencils. Carpenters I know don't use them. Um, and for a very good reason, and that is that it's hard to get good, accurate measurements with a pencil with this thick, chunky lead on the end. It can be helpful if you're marking concrete or masonry things, cement blocks, that sort of thing, where you need kind of a dark, heavy mark on a rough surface. So they have their uses, but typically they're not used by by carpenters and certainly not by woodworkers. So if, if you have one of these and you're thinking about using it for woodworking, throw that away. We're, we're not really gonna use those kinds of pencils. What we want is a good traditional standard pencil, you know, a number two pencil that you might use for your, you know, your PSAT or SAT tests or whatever. This, this is what we're gonna use in woodworking. And the reason is that we can get a nice sharp point on the tip of this that gives us good, nice, sharp, clean lines when we're making a mark. And so we want a nice, sharp pencil. So in the wood shop, there's a pencil sharpener. You want to keep that handy because anytime this pencil gets a little dull, you want, to, you want to clean it up, get a nice, sharp point on it. One thing to be aware of with, with making marks with a nice, sharp pencil is you can make a nice, sharp, clean mark on, on wood but if you press down hard, you're going to you're going to dent the wood and that pencil mark is going to be down in the wood in a groove or in a scratch that you've made with the pencil. Uh, and then later, when you go to sand this down and finish the piece or, or something like that, that mark will show up and it will be hard to get rid of. It'll be hard to erase. So what we want to do is we want to have a nice sharp pencil, but we want to make nice light delicate marks with the pencil, just dark enough to see, but not so hard that they're not so deep or, or, or dark a mark that they're harder to get rid of later by erasing or sanding them away. So we want, when a sharp pencil, a light touch on a sharp pencil. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the first thing. The next thing to know about making marks is uh, how to make the mark. Let's say, for example, we're gonna measure out with our tape measure and we want to mark at six feet, or I'm sorry, six inches. Maybe we're going to cut this board off to have a six inch long piece. So to make that mark, you might come in here and typically you'll see people make just a line like that. And I know it might be a little hard to see on the camera. This is a little far away. That pencil mark actually has a thickness to it. It's maybe a 16th of an inch wide and, you know, or a 32nd of an inch wide. And that may not seem like a lot, depending on what your situation is. But in woodworking, that, that thickness of that pencil line actually ends up being pretty significant. Often in woodworking, with furniture making or box making or kind of detailed woodworking, which is what we're learning in this class, a 16th or a 32nd of an inch is a lot. It, it can throw off uh, the joinery when we're joining pieces of wood together. If you're trying to make a nice square decorative box for a purpose or to give as a gift, that thick pencil mark becomes an issue because when we then go to make our cut, we don't really know where the actual mark is. What we want is we want a point in space. Well, this, this line now has a thickness to it and we don't know where our point is. Is it on this side of the mark? Is it on that side of the mark? And is it right in the middle? We've kind of lost, it's very easy to lose our sense of where that mark is. And if you try to make it darker to make it easier to see, you're just making the problem worse, right? The thicker and darker that mark is, the more and more inaccuracy you're creating in your, in your mark. So instead of making just a line like that, what we wanna do is we wanna use the intersection of two lines, which you know from your geometry class, two lines intersect at a point, right? So we want, we want a point. And so what we're going to do is we're going to mark that six inches with two lines to form a little V like this. And now the tip of that V is a much more precise indication of where we actually wanted our mark to be. So I want you to get in the habit of doing this in woodworking. And that is when we're marking a distance, we're going to use a V like that 
uh, to mark the point that we're trying to indicate is right where those lines intersect at that point. This is a much more precise way for marking something. So again, I'll show this again at eight inches. What you will do is you will put down your pencil right at the point where you want the measurement. Let's say it's at eight inches, exactly eight inches here. And you'll do one line in one direction, one line in the other direction. And now that's our very precise mark there that the intersection of those two lines now gives us a very precise indication within a 64th or 128th of an inch for our measurement. Same thing with a, a, uh, our combination square. If we're using our combination square, and let's say um, I'm going to put this combination square at this six inch mark here, because let's say we want to measure up one inch from the edge of our board. So here we are, the fence on the square is put at six inches. And now if we go up to the seven inch mark, we've come up one inch from the edge of our board. And so we can put our V right there at that seven inch mark. Now we have a very precise mark one inch up from the edge of our board. This, this distance here now is, is one inch to, the, to this mark. Um, so that's showing you how to make the mark and also a little bit about how to use the combination square in order to get, to get nice measurements. We don't have to go all the way to the end of the combination square. We can just pick any inch mark um, and then just count up one inch from that. Up here would be one inch from the edge of the board. Here would be two inches, three inches, four inches, and so forth. So we can use our combination square to get this nice, perfect 90 degree angle here, and then use the marks on the combination square to get our marks. The other kind of square you may see in woodworking is, is a more traditional style square. And that is, it's not adjustable. This, this red angle between the blade and the fence here is not is fixed. It's, it's locked in place. Again, these are precision instruments where this 90 degree angle uh, should be exactly 90 degrees with no variation over the length of the blade and the fence. And so we want to take good care of these. We don't want to drop them, bang them around, let them fall on the floor or use them as hammers or, or, uh, or anything like that. We want to preserve the precision of this square. But this is the other type where it's just a fixed right angle or it can be fixed at a 45 degree angle. Sometimes they have markings on them. Newer ones uh, will have a ruler on them so you can you can use the scale to measure things. You'll notice on one side, the scale starts here at the end and measures in from the end. And on the other side, the scale starts at the fence and measures over along the blade, whatever distance we have. So um, typically you'll find this where the, the different sides of the, of the square have scales moving in different directions, uh, which is nice. It can be very convenient, but you have to pay attention to that because say three inches here is three inches from the fence but three inches here is three inches from the end of the square. So, so make sure you note that. That's true, gonna be true in your combination squares also where the scales measure from different ends um, or they may have different size markings on them. For example, this one on this square, the marks come from the same end of the square. You notice that zero on the scale is at this end on this side and it's also zero on this side. The difference is the number of markings. You'll see on this scale, for example, these markings are every one eighth of an inch, whereas on this scale, they're every sixteenth of an inch. And then on the reverse side, on this side, the markings are every 32nd of an inch. So there's 32 marks every inch here, 37, uh, 30 seconds of an inch on this scale. And then over on this scale, it's marked in millimeters. So it's a metric scale. We are not going to use metric measurements in our class. We're going to be using the, the traditional uh, imperial or English system uh, that uses inches and fractions of an inch. That's still what woodworkers in America use. And so that's what we're going to learn. But if you go to Europe, and I'm not sure about Asia, but I, I'm assuming in Asia also, uh, they tend to use the metric uh, measurements, centimeters and uh, millimeters and meters for their system. So this scale happens to have that also, which is, which is nice, but we're not gonna end up using it in this class. We're gonna use the, uh, the inches and inches and feet uh, measurements.
Some squares don't have marks on them at all. This is more traditional where you'll have a square where it's just a blade and just the fence. Uh, and it's not intended to measure at all. It's simply uh, being used to, to mark or indicate a 90 degree angle. So uh, these are perfectly good squares. They work great. You just uh, can't use them for measuring. You would use a measuring tape or a ruler for that function. So using our measuring tools here that we've talked about, our tape measure, our combination square, and a good sharp pencil, let's talk through the process of getting good, accurate measurements when you're getting prepared to cut boards to a certain length. That's the most common thing that we're doing, right? We have a board. We need a, per a piece of a certain length. This is what you're going to be doing in your first project if you're working on, on campus is you're going to be cutting a number of pieces to length to construct your, uh, your tool tote. Uh, so let's just walk through that. This may seem obvious to you, but, but note the, the, the kind of the details of the way I describe this because the, the techniques I'm going to show you here will help you get good, strong, um, accurate cuts time after time after time, which will make your woodworking better. Uh, and, and your results better. So let's say we have a board here and we need a 12 inch piece. We need it to be exactly 12 inches. So I'm gonna take my tape measure and I'm gonna lay it out here. And here's my 12 inches that I'm, gonna, I'm going to measure to. Using the techniques that I showed you, we're gonna make a mark here at 12 inches. Now notice something here. I want my tape measure to be parallel to the edge of the board. If it's at an angle, even a little bit of an angle, it's gonna throw off our measurement because the distance, as you know, on the diagonal of a triangle, if I wanna come out exactly 12 inches, but this is at an angle, now all of a sudden I've got the hypotenuse of a, of a triangle instead of just a, a straight line here. So, so, and that'll throw off our measurement. So we wanna make sure that our tape measure, always whenever we're measuring the length of something, we want our tape measure or ruler or combination square, whatever it is, to be exactly parallel to the direction that we're measuring. In this case, it's along the length of the board. So we want it to be exactly parallel to the length of the board and not at an, not at an angle, which will throw off our measurement. So that's the first thing. Second thing is we have our 12 inches. We're going to press our tape down so it's right next to the, the wood here. And uh, as I showed you, you're gonna make a V mark at 12 inches, exactly at 12 inches in order to, to get our exact measurement. So there we go, there's our 12 inches. That's, that's a good technique to get a good accurate 12 inch length here. Now, when we go to cut this, it can be helpful to have a line all the way across the board in order to guide our saw. Uh, and that's true whether we're using some kind of a powered saw, hand saw, or, uh, or, or a traditional hand saw where we're, where we're sawing um, uh, with hand tools. Either way, we want to, it's helpful to have that nice straight line across there at 12 inches to help guide our cut. So that's where our combination square comes in. We didn't use the combination square to measure the 12 inches. I mean, we, we could, but that actually turns out to be kind of an awkward way to do it. What we wanna do is we wanna use the, 12, the combination square to get a nice per perpendicular line across our board at exactly 12 inches. So there's a couple of techniques for that. If you try to line the square up and then figure out where to put the pencil, we start to introduce a source of error here in terms of where we, where we place our pencil because the pencil, the edge of the square and the pencil aren't exactly in the same location. There's a little bit of a difference between the edge of the square and the pencil. And the less sharp your pencil is, and depending the angle that you hold your pencil, it can throw off your mark by an eighth of an inch, a sixteenth of an inch, a thirty-second of an inch. Anyway, it's a source of error that we can eliminate. The proper way to do this is to use a combination square, is to put your pencil on the tip of your mark, since we know where that's supposed to be, and then gently slide the combination square up to it with our pencil tilting slightly away from the square so that that tip of that pencil is right up against the, uh, the edge of the combination square. So again, we put the pencil on, the, on our mark at our exact 12 inches, and we gently slide the square up next to the pencil in order to make the mark. Now we know that that pencil will track exactly at our 12 inches. And once we have this place, we don't want our square to move. Once we have this place, now we can draw a nice light line there 
again, not pressing hard into the wood, we can draw a nice light line very precisely right at our V mark for our 12 inches. So that's the, that's the best way to do it. Let me walk you through that one more time so that you see the sequence. This time I'll do the mark at 11 inches just to have a different spot. So we, we lay our tape measure out nice and parallel to the edge of the board. We make our V mark at the 11 inches. It doesn't need to be a big mark. We put our pencil at the tip. We slide the combination square up to the pencil gently so we don't move it. And then we make our, ma our mark, a nice light but, but, but visible pencil mark at our 11 inch mark. That's the technique you should use any time and each time that you're marking out the length of a piece of wood in order to cut it. When you're getting ready to make a cut in a board, to cut a board to a certain length, there's another thing that you need to be aware of in woodworking. And, and this is where a lot of people make a mistake when they're measuring and cutting pieces of wood or, or, or metal or, or again, any other material. Uh, they, they forget to account for the, the kerf of the saw blade. So let's talk about what the kerf is and why we need to be aware of it. The kerf of the saw blade or the kerf of the cut is the gap that is left when you're making a cut here. So I have a board here. I've cut partway through the board with a saw blade. And you'll notice here that the saw blade actually removes a little bit of wood. It's about a, it's about a 16th or 3 30 seconds of an inch here of wood that have been removed by the blade. The blade literally comes in and takes carves out those chips. That's what makes the sawdust, right? Is the sawdust is the wood that used to be here in this gap. That gap is called the kerf, K-E-R-F. And so this is, this is a vocabulary word in woodworking that you're going to need to know and to know what it means and why it's important. The kerf is this gap that's created whenever you make a cut. And it shortens the wood, right? What, however long this board was, it's now, it now has this much less wood in its length. And if we're cutting this all the way through in order to, to cut a board um, to a certain length, again, let's say we wanna cut this to, uh, I don't know, six or seven inches or something, that wood that's removed, we need to be aware of that because it can affect the accuracy of our, of our cut. And, and let me show you why. So let's say in making this cut, this is again, the, our saw cut that is part way done. We, we wanna cut this board to a certain length and here's our, Here's our pencil mark that we were cutting to, that we marked and measured very accurately. Here's, here's the cut that's partway done through the board. Okay, this part's cut, this part is not yet cut. And here's our pencil line. Notice what happens. If we make our cut on this side of the pencil line, then this board on this half is now shorter by the amount of the curve, right? We've removed this wood here as we make the cut, and that makes this side of the, this board on this side, we're, we're making two boards, right? We're turning one board into two boards. This board is now shorter by the amount of the curve, whereas this board on this side of the pencil line and on this side of the curve is not shortened because of where the, the cut is. So where we make our cut is very important in terms of where where the saw blade goes, on which side of the pencil line it goes, so that we don't shorten our, bo our board unintentionally. This is set up so that hopefully, this is the piece of wood we wanted to keep. This is the one we marked and measured and wanted as our fixed length. And we put the saw blade on this side of the line so that the kerf ends up being in the waste side or the, the piece we don't want or haven't measured. The kerf is over there and affects that piece and doesn't affect the length of our piece. If the piece we wanted to keep was this side of the cut and we put the blade there, now all of a sudden this piece is, is too short by an eighth of an inch by the thickness of the curve here. And we've introduced an error and now our things won't fit. So it's very important to keep in mind as we're getting ready to make a cut and getting ready to mark it, it's very important that we we be aware of where the kerf is going to go, where the saw blade is going to go when we make the cut. 
So back to our 12 inch example that I showed you from earlier, we had, we had marked our board here 12 inches from the end because we wanted a 12 inch long piece. When you make this mark, many, many woodworkers and carpenters find it helpful to now mark which side of the line is our waist side. This side is the 12 inches we want. We want that to be exactly 12 inches. This side is what we call the waist side because for this cut, we don't care what happens over there. We might use this piece later for something else, or we might make a second cut to get a second piece out of it. But for this cut, we don't care. We, we care about this 12 inch long piece here, and we want it to be exactly 12 inches. So after we make our mark and after we draw our line, I put an X here on the waist side of the line so that when I go later to make this cut, I know I want the saw blade to be on this side of the line in the waist side so I don't make my board on this side too short. If I made the cut on this side of the line, now all of a sudden my, my 12 inch board is only 11 and 7 eighths wide instead of exactly 12 inches. And that's gonna be a problem, believe me, that distance, a 16th or an eighth of an inch, can make your whole project not fit together very well. So by putting this X here on the waist side of the line, that reminds me when I go over to the saw that I'm going to now put my saw on this side of the line so that I keep my 12 inch board at exactly 12 inches.